Hello and welcome to Racers Now. It's the usual Thursday slot looking ahead to Saturday's racing. But first things first, make sure you are commenting. Any comment in the comment section enters you into the tickets for prize draw for Cheltenham at the end of January. So please do get entered. Chance to win. A pair of tickets up for grabs. We've got SD with us. Look at his hair. Lovely flowing hair. He's about due a Christmas haircut, SD. But there's still a couple of weekends of racing to get in between now and Christmas. SD, how are you? Well, my hairstyle's better than yours. Look at the stage of you. You look like you come out of Alcatraz. Um, yours, yours looks lovely. I'm wavy. Good, There's uh, a lot of it. It's good volume. Too. Well, it's, beautiful. it's cost £17 to have a haircut. No, <laughs> um, bloody ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, and also, there's still the prize of the Mick Walsh calendar to give away as well in the comments. So make sure you pick the winner of the 5.30 at Wolverhampton on Saturday. Oh, I can imagine that'll be a popular race. Right, we're not messing around, SD. Straight into it. There's some good racing on ITV Friday, but it's the crap racing on Friday that you're interested in, this banger handicap hurdle on Friday. Is that You've got a bet in there, have you? There's a chase for a kick-off, but never right. mind. Well, I'm not concentrating. Um, well, yes, yes, there's a bet. I... I... I know a ratio apples is what is he doing? You're on the wrong race, you fool! You're on the wrong race. Move it on. Like what apples? Uh, oh, two fifty, twelve fifty, twelve fifty five. Oh, I'm all over the place. I'm all he's, over he's, the place. He's, he's, right, there, there's some seven or four about ratio apples. Let's be honest, he's he's the best horse in the race. This horse was given an absolute. I, I have to say, I don't like the jockey. First off, I don't like the jockey. Toby Win. Son of Steve Wynn. Steve Wynn was a crap jockey, and I think Toby's probably <laughs> the same as well. Um, but he was given a dreadful ride at Kelso uh, first time. He'd never put in the race at all, couldn't get jump in. And then he decided to put him in the race too much at Weatherby. They were, it was, he went through all the parch ground, went far too early, and that old dog East Street, who's come second today, um, nabbed him you know, nabbed him late. He's back half a mile in trip. He really should be beating these. He's, he's chase mark through bad jockey shit. He's five pound less than his hurdle mark. Yeah, but the same jockey's riding now. Yeah, we're just going to have to hope he, he doesn't make a whole look of it again. Surely to God, Toby, just don't muck it up. If you don't muck it up, this this thing wins and we all get our wages. It's it's all very easy. So right. the, uh, there was nothing concerning me in the race. Look, for Kia was second in an egg and spoon race at Sedgefield last time. It's a big drop in grade, this for Horatio Apples. If he, if he can't win this, you'd be, you'd be very, very disappointed. I mean, there's the 11-year-old Billingsley in the race. There's uh, Lady of the Night. What a name that is for a horse as well. Yes, comments. Uh, no no comment available on that one. Right, all right. Horatio Apples on the Friday. Um, there is some uh, there is some uh, Cheltenham racing on Friday. And I actually fancied one, SD. Well, there's no point listening, listening to what you fancied. Oh, uh, there is. I remember, there is. I remember the last one. You picked that bloody Delta work. Yeah, well, Grey Dawning, you put, up that, you put that up the other week. That's and it won, up, of that's, course. It did. That's gone up in the weights. That was at Haydock. I'm trying to... This one. Willie the Builder. 115. Well, uh, well you'd on know Friday. all about Willies, wouldn't you? There's a big uh, well, one on your more, head. I know, more <laughs> about, I know more about building. Thank you very much. Right, uh, yeah. one, 115. I do actually like this, Willie the Builder. If it runs in a straight line, and it didn't last time, it will need to run in a straight line this time. <laughs> it, just put, it ran in a grade two novice like, hurdle last time, and now they're putting it in this handicap. I don't see. I don't quite understand no, why they're doing it that. A, after, it was a great two. It was a great two novice. Yeah, and I suppose the, the winner's been second in the Great Wood since. Hasn't he it? he could Hasn't have won that, you know. He, he ran in. If you watch the replay, this Willie the Builder. He ran into the back of a horse coming over two out, and he jinked as a result of nearly clattering into the horse in front. And then he's veered veered right up the straight. He obviously can't do that again. But I think with a bit more experience, the, the fact that they've put him in handicap here, I like mm. him. He, I think he'll win Friday. He's 11 to 2. Right, moving if he on. If he's right at Cheltenham, it isn't a bad thing. Of course, you want to be at the stands rail at Cheltenham. Yes. Anybody yes. knows that. So. Yeah, so that's mine for Friday. Willie the Builder. Uh, Willie right, the on Builder. To... On to Cheltenham Saturday, um, and um, Doncaster's on as well. So, right, we'll start at Cheltenham, one fifteen. Yeah. Go on, then. Uh, well, Calico's 2-1. to one. I, I couldn't understand it. I mean, they were a lot shorter early in the week, Calico. And I thought, you know what, 5-4 to is the right price. It's, it's not a great race, this, for the money, is it? And this in excess is due. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's about as consistent as my hair. Um, I'm afraid <laughs> it's, you know, it, it was getting beat to places like Southern last year. Third of four at Chepster. When it runs you... one half decent race at Cheltenham, and suddenly it's the bloody second coming. Mm. I I couldn't understand why Calico wasn't clear second favourite. I mean, it had been second to none other than John Bob and a clear second. He was only seven lengths down when he fell up the last of entry. It's a perfectly satisfactory reappearance at Cheltenham. I don't think four pound rise is, is by by any means a bad thing. And I, I thought he'd be clear five. I thought he'd be I thought he'd be five to four, eleven oh eight, certainly not uh, not two to one. So he's a bet at two to one. Right. Nothing sense. much else in the race. Funambly, Sibylla, you know, he wins that game spirit every year at Newbury. I'm not okay. convinced Ork and Risk is a chaser by any means and well the others appear to be trees. Right, got it. I like it. Nice and concise there. On to the this one fifty um I thought this was a decent enough race, this. 12 runners, nice Probably, field, this. Whatever they call it, it's a virgin bet after being the Caspian Caviar. And so, we have a gold, so we have a Paddy Power Gold Cup. We have a, the, this December Gold Cup. Then we have the Cheltenham Gold Cup. I think there's too many Gold Cups and too many Nationals as well. But anyway, maybe one for another day. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was always the triple print when the great George Ward used to, uh, used to um, sponsor it. Print. It was a triple print, and in the background is the great Signor El Betruti, who, who did the Mackison triple print double 26 years ago. What a great <laughs> horse that was, trained, trained by the wonderful Sue Knock, and owned by her husband, Gerard. Right, why are you backing Brad this mom, used to mom ride Morel, then? Come on, why are you backing this Mon Morel? Why, why am I? Well, I, I think I, there's not a lot in Mon Morel and um, Thunder Rock at the Weights on their run here. On New Year's Day, I have to say though, a I don't I, I was at Carlisle when Thunder Rock ran, and he made an absolute howler three out. He made some howlers going round in the dipper. I think and nobody's gotten on on this, but I don't think he jumps well enough to win a race like this. If he makes those sorts of errors coming down the hill, he'll either come down or just completely, you know, capsize his chance. Uh, I. I think Mon Morales are better than a one four five horse. Surely, you know, he was he he was second in the Dipper. He was a bloody good hurdler as well. He was, you know, he was he was second to to Epitone to, uh, at uh, at Aintree. Yeah. Um. He didn't run terribly well in in the Silly Isles. Um. But I I just think he's better. He's better than these and Nichols. Nichols runs a few. Il, he runs Il Redito, who wouldn't be without a chance. But clearly, Harry's had the Harry's had the um, the choice, and he'd be he would be my idea of the winner of this. I think I think he can beat Thunder Rock. Don't forget, he's only six as well, so there is a little bit of scope for improvement. Uh, Fugitive always runs well and round here under the wonderful Gav Sheehan. Um, I don't think there was that much else in the race. You know, I mean, Emmett Mullins has got this, this so Scottish, hasn't he? But he, again, you know, he was he was fairly well beaten at the at the festival. I didn't think he had that much that much in hand. If anything on his mark, Ferro Bamboo, I don't think gets up the hill. Maybe Torn and Frey can run a race, but he'll have to come on a little bit for his last run and twist as well in these races, but. Thought, I thought Mon Morel was the better. I'd be very worried about Thunder Rocks jumping in a in a race like this. And you know what? These Ollie Murphy horses, they don't win really good races. There's always some sort of some sort of excuse. I'm, I'm not a big Ollie Murphy fan. Okay, got you. Mon Morel, eleven to two. That's in the one fifty. Uh on to the two twenty five. Also on ITV, I think as well. Uh, another decent enough field. Nine in there. At least we're getting some yeah. each way betting. This protector at last year's um Haydock uh, Haydock um Betfair Chase winner uh bombed out he, in it this year. He was bloody awful at Haydock, wasn't he? Oh I yeah, it was terrible. It, it was it was you could tell it after because obviously they do two laps, two and a half laps there. He comes past you the first time and he was off it. Look, it's not laps. We're not on an athletics track. You're not very Linford Christie. They're laps, mate. Laps. I'll call them what I want. Right, but he was crap. A doc, so but he's obviously carrying top weight in this one. Um, 
yeah, interesting bit of placement, really. Well, of course, they're going for the for the race that should never exist, aren't they? They've said they're going for the Fleur de Lis chase. I mean, that is absolutely great planning from the BHA, allowing this. I do go to the Winter Million because it's good racing, but the, you know, you have the Peter Marsh the day before, the week after you've got the um, whatever they call the Pillar now, the Cotswold Chase. You've got the Great Yorkshire. There's a three mile handicap at Sandown the following week, uh-huh, and uh-huh. The, the, there's a Denman Chase the following week. So. The, Let's have a three miles conditions race in the middle of all that. I mean, they're absolute numbskulls of BHA. Well, I'm on about the BHA being numbskulls. Oh, here we go. Um, they are allowing Southall not to race. This is my understanding. Um, with with public attendance until the 18th of January. So they'll be racing with no public there. So it's in effect behind closed doors. Yep. They've got this massive new sexy new year meeting, and no bugger can go. Come on, the BHA, get some backbone and tell Southall to piss off until they have their facilities in order. The, the course is not fit for purpose. You could run you could run that meeting at Doncaster or Sedgefield or any of the other art tracks or even, I mean, you talk it as race of the day before. Maybe they could race the day after, I don't know, but it certainly shouldn't be at Southall, especially at the expense of Fakenham who basically had a sellout crowd on New Year's Day and have yeah, been, but they've been bid for it. the fixture yeah, by some... Out... I mean, what the bloody hell is going on at the well, BHA? You... Show some backbone and tell Ark to frigging do one. Right, OK, well, that's our that's our rant for the week. Right, what, you, you're back in three under three five, are you? Well, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I that... thought he ran a, a good race at Wincanton in the, in the Badger. He ran a bloody good race in the Scottish National, as we know. He's he's off 150. He should be able to operate from that. Um, I like I like Nichols in these sorts of races. Um, Pro Boy Boys, the yeah, obvious we can tell you've put, you've put two up now through Nichols. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Pro Boy Boys, the obvious threat. But again, you know, I didn't think he was jumping was completely blemish free. And this is this is a test for a novice against the previous Bet Bird Chase winner. We've identified Nicky Henderson's record in, in staying chases before. Yeah. Now. That was over three miles, three and a half. This is slightly less, but the, the same comment applies. I know I put Elvis Mayle up the other week, but this is a bloody, this is a lot more um, of a of a test. I don't think easy is that stay. So I I, I thought three under three five was, was a perfectly fair bet at the odds. There's a few of yours in here. Rapper, Elvis Mayo. Yeah, a few of them in there. Right, mm. right. that's Cheltenham wrapped up. Three bets at Cheltenham on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I don't see the point in chasing those later races. They're nine impossible. I've never matched that winner of that bloody mare's hurdle. All no. the time I've been mm-hmm. on this earth, so I'm not going to start now. I thought Doncaster was the best punting card of the weekend. I was expecting you to say that. So over to Doncaster we go. 2.05. Um, what are you say? Handicap uh, chase. Nice race, this. Yep. Um, I think they priced one up wrong. Very, very simply, gentle Franks, the rag of the lot of them. Yeah. Look, he won his novice hurdle here over two and a half. He palpably didn't stay three on his on his chasing debut. He ran all right to a point. Yeah. And he was he was back that day. Henry Oliver's a, a very shrewd operator, and when they're back, it generally means a bit schooling well. He's back over a more suitable distance on better ground. And you know his chase mark. He's run. He's run once over over fences. He was he was second in a point. Remember, he started his life in a point. He's run once over fences, and his chase mark's three pound less than his hurdle mark. I, I think the drop in trips the key with the with this one. And I thought I thought odds of twenty to one were very very generous for a horse like this. Especially That's what I, I like about USD. We've had a seven to four, a two to one, and now we're in a twenty to one. But you do not discriminate on price. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, by the time I was at Weatherby, I think needs softer ground. I didn't think there was much in the race, to be honest. I was I was just astonished. I nearly put Vintage Frizzer, who, of course, was owned by my great pal, Jason Files. Um, you, can, you can make a case for Vintage Frizz. I'm, I'm not quite sure he'd win, he'd win this sort of race. Of course, he was in front of Famous Bridge, who, who won at um, Haydock a couple of weeks ago at Air last time, and he wants better ground. But, yeah. He's 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 half a he's half a chance certainly, but Gentle I thought Frank. I thought Gentle Frank at at twenties as a previous course winner on decent ground I thought he's a very fair bet. Right, good. Take I note. Thought. Take note. Right on to this two forty then. Uh, also at Donny, uh, like you say, de- decent enough ground for this time of the year. 
Um, it is. I mean, largely dry forecast as well, haven't we? Yeah. And again, you know, there's there's one that betting's missed here. You're going to, you know, you're going to have to scroll down to the bottom because the selection is Nayati. Yeah. Nayati won the um. What do you call that race? The the Hogmanay Handicap Hurdle at uh, yeah, New Year's Day at Musselburgh. On, on New Year's Day at Musselburgh. Uh, every four of the basically the first five, four of them behind him are now rated higher. He is, and he wants, you know, he wants two miles on half decent ground. Donald's in form. Brian Hughes has probably chose him over over Geronimo, who's a who's actually a shorter price. Yep. He's got a pipe opener at Huntingdon. He's back down two below his winning mark. I couldn't believe this horse was twenty five to one. There's firms paying four places here. Mm. I, you know, I, I, I was just, I was gobsmacked. He was so big. I mean, look, Jim Coco's a, a got a got a solid enough, um, solid enough chance certainly. But the, the again, you know, there wasn't a terrible amount of depth to the race. Well, soaring glory's not one for years. Uh, Match just won at Musselburgh, didn't he? But I, I thought twenty five was a was a standout prize, and he he was certainly worth 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 backing at, at those odds, especially with, with with Brian on. I think he's a very well weighted horse, and and you could just you could see him winning this. Well, you've convinced me. I will I will back that at twenty five to one, no problem. Right, on to the uh, 3.15. I think this might be your last one of the day. Mr. Coffee, we're still seeing him a third season. One second. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, we can now see SD ceiling a little bit there, but I'm sick of I'm sick of talking about this Mr. Coffee. He's been a novice for God knows how long. I think he's a third season novice. A horse that ran in a, a Grand National is still now, after that, running in novice races. I just don't really understand it, to, to be honest. Um, I really, really don't. But yeah, three uh three fifteen. Uh just over just under three miles this one, SD. Yes. Go on then. Yeah, That's just under timing. three. I like this race again from a punting point of view. I thought it was a you know I I'm guessing you just said Mr. Coffee never wins. Yes, I have. I, I don't know how you can I have a horse can run in a grand national and then after running in a grand national go back to running in novice races. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, it's quite simply he hasn't won a chase. Yeah. I know, it still doesn't make sense. Not, um, this is not a novice race, by the way. Let's just just be, just, let's a, just a point on Mr. Coffey. I ain't sure he's going to run. Well, you could say um, that about every Nicky Anderson horse. <laughs> well, well, you could, but there is some, <laughs> there is some method in this. He was declared a non-runner, and I'll, I'll just list these off for you. 13th of November last year, good ground, Cheltenham. 26th of November last year, good ground, Cheltenham. 9th of December last year, good ground, Cheltenham. 28th of January this year. Good ground, Doncaster. If the ground goes good, Nicky will get his stick out and think, round it, oh, <laughs> then take We a have to look after the welfare of the horses, Esty. Well, yes, of course. Of course. Yes. Um, so, as you've said, if, you know, if this horse is 11 or 2, and I hope it does, John, because you've got a bloody good... Uh, you, you have a good shout, haven't you? Um, I thought Forward Plan for a kickoff ran a very good race when he was out the weights in the in the Badger Rails. We've already alluded to the Badger Rails. It's working out reasonably well, you know. Certainly, Red, who's fourth in the race and six lengths ahead of Forward Plan, ran a perfectly good race in the um, which race was it? The London National last week. Um, yeah. And I, I I thought he he had a he, I thought he had a favourites chance here. I thought he'd be a bit shorter than what he was. He's he's a he's a reasonably handicapped individual who who goes on very well on good ground and is progressive. Um, I think it's interesting they ran him in the Badger actually because they clearly think a lot of him. Um, and then I just looked through the race and I can't resist a shot. You like this for a joke? A shot of two shots on oh. two shots of tequila. Oh yes, obviously. It was marvellous, isn't he? He's been in form. He was he was second at Catrick last time, second at, at, at Carlisle the time before. Becky Menzies, wonderful trainer, knows what she's doing. Um she's on fire at the moment. Brian Hughes is on. I thought nine to one. There's some firms paying four places. Good heavens. I mean you could you could have a decent you could have a decent wager 
on that bang in form this horse um i don't he certainly he appeared to improve going over three miles last year he's won round doncaster on on decent ground as well um he won he actually won um in march this year doing handstands from from what's called everyday champagne who has subsequently um won at air so the form's pretty good i i, I can't seem going off nine to one but you know we play the rule fours I'd, I'd rather mr coffee ran and i do like playing rule four but it just means you're going to get a little bit of a deduction if it doesn't you know yeah okay great well we'll get all the bets listed in the description as usual do you know what sd i've got a good feeling about your selections this week i think you're going to do all right Oh so, well, 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 that's brilliant. That really has put the mockers on it. And will I be seeing you? I'll be at uh, Dunstall Park on Saturday. Will I be seeing you there? There's an outside okay. shot, but I'm losing. I'm losing my enthusiasm. I am going to Cheltenham Friday, Saturday, and do I go to Wolverhampton to meet you Saturday night? I don't know. Is the answer? Um, great, Wolverhampton on a Saturday evening. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely yeah. wonderful, won't it be? It's possible. It's probably eleven to eight. Yes. Yeah, that kind. Of, but it's, you it's do that, drive that. a Skoda, so it might take you a while to yeah. get from uh, yeah. from Cheltenham to Wolverhampton. Yeah, like. well, when it, when I do a multiple on all these horses that are going to win Saturday that you said, I might buy, I might upgrade to a maybe you know a high Hyundai or something like that. A high Hyundai, <laughs> greatest thing of, of of Japanese engineering. Right. Anyway, so remember Panasonic. Air any driver, comment, basically. any comment will do. Any comment, you will get entered. Into the uh, into the prize draw for the tickets. Say SD's a dick. Even if you want to slag off SD, just any comment will do. Yeah. In the name of a horse, uh, name, uh, just don't anything. your Mick Walsh calendar. Mick Walsh, five right, so, thirty, Wolverhampton, Saturday. Goodbye. Right, right. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back next week with some more uh, racers content on Racers Now. Thank you. <laughs>